Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I have a belated lookbook to share with you. I say belated because I did the plans for this um, like back in the beginning of December. Um, I'll pop a link up to that video right now if you're interested in actually seeing the plans for it. I stayed pretty true to, true to uh, what I said I was going to do at the beginning. Um, Anyway, I, when I was finishing up Coat Making Month, and thank you guys for all the comments on Coat Making Month. I'm glad that was as enjoyable for you all was for me. As you can see, I have a lot of coats now, so <laughs> I should be good for a while. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And I'm not entire. I mean, I'm not sick of making coats. Um, and I think I'm kind of ready to move on a little bit. But um, yeah, I could do another coat. And I am going to be doing some more jackets here soon. Um, one of which being a faux leather that I have from Minerva that I need to make something for uh, the Minerva Makers team. Um, a post for them. And then also the uh, Vogue trench coat sew along. I'll be making obviously a coat for that as well. Um, and that does not fill me with thread. So <laughs> I just really love making coats uh, and jackets and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, while I was um, in that process, I actually tore through um, my shoulder pads, shoulder heads, um, all sorts of uh, stock of inventory I usually keep on hand, and I was out of zippers. So the orange coat, which is right there, um, I got to a point where I couldn't go any further, so I had to place a Wawak order. So I was waiting for that to come, and usually that honestly comes in like two days. Um, I was still in the mood to sew, so I decided to go ahead and cut into some of this fabric that's been sitting there forever for PJs for my children. And so that's what I did, um, and then I made them model for me so that I can have to show you guys what I've been working on. Okay, so I've made two sets for my son and one set for my daughter, mostly because, um, well, I'll explain it in a second. I kind of explained it a little bit in the um, plans video, but uh, both of them have been wanting some flannel pajamas. You know, we're in Indiana. It's going to be super cold this weekend, I think, like wind chills and sub-zero temperatures. Um, and they wanted some flannel PJs. Uh, my son had well outgrown all of his, and my daughter, ha my daughter hasn't had any um, flannel pajamas, I think, for a couple of years now. Um, and she claims that she just gets cold upstairs, although she sleeps with the door closed, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, when I made the um, pine cone, or sorry, I, keep, I what, called it that when the pattern was released, the pine cove PJs by Itch to Stitch for myself, she really liked those because she wanted a, um, she has a pair of knit, uh, like your standard pajamas, you know, like the, the collar with the button up, um, and then pants, uh, type pajamas and a knit from Target, and they've seen, they, it's a crappy rayon is what it is, and so it kind of all sticks to each other, because I am not going to air dry pajamas, I'm just not, those are going to go into the dryer. <laughs> I just don't have space to air dry. You know, I air dry a lot of clothes that I of hers and mine, basically, mostly. Um, but you know, when it comes to PJs, I'm not going to air dry the PJs. So they are looking worse for wear. Um, and when she saw my Pine Cove PJs, she thought that it looked kind of cool, just because it was still a two-piece set, but a little different. So um, because it's got the wrap top and all that kind of stuff. So first, I went to Style Maker. And um, she had some of the mammoth flannel. I think it's Rob. I think the mammoth flannel is Robert Kaufman. I think um, it's 44 inches wide, real nice and beefy, like a nice warm. It's good for shirts, um, but nice thick ones. Um, you know, it's a, it's a really nice weight flannel, <laughs> and I've worked with it before. But I got this really fun one. I just love the colors. And actually, this um, plaid or check or whatever came in a few, like, four different colorways. Um, I wanted something somewhat gender neutral since I knew I was going to be making them for my son and my daughter. Um, and I thought this one, I mean, it's got some of the pink in there, but, I mean, he likes to wear pink. So, um, and I liked these colors. So I went with this colorway. And I made the Pine Cove PJs for my daughter. I made her, oh my gosh, her ties are like, I need to cut these. These are a, well, I'll talk about them in a second, but I've got threads everywhere here. I just need to, oh my gosh, and the static, I've talked about it, is intense. Okay. <laughs> so the Pine Cove PJs, they've been worn once, and um, I just pulled them out of the washing machine and dryer. In fact, all of this just came out of the uh, washing machine and dryer. My kids are anxiously wanting them back to wear tonight. Um, I made her the size four, I think, or two. I can't remember now if I made her the size two or the size four. I shortened the in, the um, legs by an inch and a half and the arms by an inch. 
and that's the only adjustments I did to these. Now you'll notice that they are a little long on her in these um, photos. Those were done right after I made them, but I wanted them a little bit long because flannel does shrink, and I wanted to be able to, um, is this inside out? No, it's right inside <laughs> And I wanted to be able to not get too short, so I wanted everything to be a little bit longer on them. So, love these pajamas. She loves them just as much as I love my pair. I cut her little pocket on the bias, just so you can actually see it on there. Looks really, really cute. Now, because this is so thick, I did use um, twill tape, for, um, uh, also from Style Maker, for the ties on these, because I didn't, there's a pattern piece to make your own ties, and that's what I did on my pair, because it's a thinner, mine's like a, a cotton um, shirting, like a, a crinkle cotton kind of, uh, but I knew that this would be way too thick to do ties, so I just did the um, twill tape, and my twill tape is just raveling, and this is actually a polyester twill tape, thinks, I think, so I need to cut it again, and I think I can singe the ends with a lighter. Um, it's only one of them that's really, which one is it? There's four different ties the way it ties. Oh, here it is. That really became a mess. <laughs> I need to take care of it before she wears those tonight. So there is the top on those. And then the bottoms. Oh my gosh. Really need to take care of that. The bottoms are just an elastic waist bottom. There aren't any pockets on these. Um, I really need to get new tags. I just stitched, someone had said that on all the clothes they make for their kids, they would do like an X or something in the back and that's how the kids knew that that was the back. That's what I did on these. Um, so there's an X on the back there. Um, these just have an inch hem. Uh, so I guess technically I could let it out um, a little bit if we needed to for length. Um, but yeah, just a nice comfortable, comfy pair of pajamas. Got my plaid matching there across the front. Um, pretty good with the side seams as well. You know, with the shaping and stuff, it can get off a little bit. But yeah, nice and warm, and she claims that they um, are doing the job. They're nice and warm, and like I said, they were both, when I told them I needed these to do, uh, to film today, they were like, well, can we have them for tonight? I was like, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so, I do need to fix that tie though for her because that will drive her nuts if there's strings and stuff hanging off of it. So there is her pair. And then for him, and actually as I was thinking of this, I was like, I don't know why I thought that I needed gender neutral, that they needed to have matching pajamas. I mean, they're 14. I, I mean, no one sees them in their pajamas but each other. I mean, obviously, um, and us around the house. But I'm like, that's really funny that in my head I was like, oh, I need something gender neutral because <laughs> it had to match. Oh, hmm. Anyway, for my son, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do for his PJ pants. I just knew I wanted a straight PJ pant, and I actually think I had mentioned I was going to do Thread Theory has one, but I actually ended up going with the wardrobe by me. They have a unisex PJ um, pant, PJ pant pattern. It's kind of hard to say, and it does not have a side seam, so it is just one big piece um, again, this is 44 inch wide fabric, so I was not able to fold the fabric on itself because it's just one gigantic piece and you cut that out twice. So it's the two legs front and back. So you only have an inseam. Um, you only have an inseam. You don't have any side seams, which by the way, if you're using plaid, makes life so much easier. So it only, because then you're only having to match um, the inseam. It just makes life a lot easier. And this one has a two inch hem um, for the, per the pattern. So he's got um, quite a bit that I could let out on him because uh, he's, my daughter's probably close to being done growing, I would assume, but he is just getting started. So um, in order to get some life out of these, but he loves these things. I made the size, again, it's unisex, I think, and it goes like A, B, C, D type um, uh, sizing. And I made the size B for him for his, um, <laughs> I made it for his hip measurement because he's got a little soccer butt um, and then has zero waist. So we've got <laughs> tiny waist and honestly he put them on and he's like, I mean, I asked him, I said, are th were those comfortable on the waist? And he's like, I mean, they could go in a little bit more and like pulled a whole bunch out. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to make you a toddler waistband. So you're just going to deal with the baggy waistband. Um, but yes, I'm very pleased with my matching across the, not that they care, but, um, I put in one and a half inch wide elastic, which is what this pattern calls for. But I have started, um, stitching in the middle just to, number one, it keeps things from, uh, elastic from flipping. 
Um, but then I think it also just gives it a nice ready to wear look. So I just stretch it out when I'm sewing. So as I just use a straight stitch to stitch in between, you can kind of see um, in between those two. It does stretch out the elastic a little bit, um, so you kind of have to hit it with steam to bring it back in um, a little, or make the maybe make the elastic just a little bit tighter than you would normally. But um, yeah, he loves those. Uh, and I, well, I can see quite a few of these in his future because he has really outgrown all of his pajama pants that, um, and he likes when I make them for him. Um, so I need to, um, I'm sure, some lighter weight ones for when we get into the warmer months, and I'm sure he'll want to pick some, you know, like Star Wars or something, uh, something fun and quilting cotton. Um, but I think three yards would get a pair of pants um, in the 44 inch, just because I need the length and I can only cut it out flat, you know one and then the other. Um, but yeah, probably look for some sales at Joann's or whatever and make him some in quilting cotton as well. These made up super quickly. I mean, my daughter's made up quick. I mean, just a pair of PJ pants, but this literally just has the inseam and then you sew up the crotch seam and then you sew in the um, elastic and that's it. It was super easy. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I highly recommend this pattern. It's just very easy. And then for the shirt, I had to use, um, also from Stylemaker Fabrics, this knit. Uh, it's a cotton jersey. Uh, it was a little on the pricey side. I think it was like $17 a yard, but it is so nice. I got a yard and a half, um, and I did the uh, Metro Tee by Liesl & Co. Uh, they had a 30% off sale not that long ago, and I bought a couple of their new patterns for myself um, and then grabbed this one for him. I also grabbed her um, men's button-up shirt pattern because he does like when I make him those, and my husband likes when I make the button-up shirts um, for him as well. So I did buy that one. I'm anxious to try that one out. Um, but yeah, he loves this. I made the size extra small for him and didn't do anything with the length on the body or the sleeves and it fits just great. So it's like the perfect size. It, I mean, it, it's, it went together really well. Um, very easy make. Uh, and the one and a half yards was just enough fabric. Um, and I had like a sizable scrap that I was able to use for the second half or the second set that I made for him that I'm going to show you here in a second. So it was perfect. Like a yard and a half right now gets him a t-shirt and that's pretty much it. <laughs> but, uh, at this size, Anyway, and most of it's the length. It's for the, you know, the length, not so much the width. Anyway, turned out really, really nice. I highly s suggest that pattern, too. Um, it was a, a really good one, and I bet I make that one quite a few different times as well. Okay, the second set I made for him, and I talked about this again in the plans video, was um, I had made myself a cardigan, cardigan jacket type thing um, for the Style Maker Fall Fabric Tour, and I made it in this uh, luxury, what was it called? Luxury plush sweatshirt fleece or something like that, and super soft in a, a camel color. And when I was making it, he had walked in the room. He's very tactile. He touches everything. <laughs> And he had run his hands over and he's like, oh my gosh, this is so soft. He's like, could you get some for me? He's like, not in this color, but something for me. And she sold out of it almost instantaneously. Because I think originally she had it in black, chocolate brown, camel, and gray. I really would have liked to get my hands on the chocolate brown for myself, but I didn't. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but then she did pre-order and brought in the gray again and the black maybe. Anyway, he picked the gray, the charcoal gray. So I ordered some um, it, with the thought of making a set, and I think I ordered three yards, and this I got this all out of three yards, and it, it was just three yards. So I was able to use the leftover of his um, t-shirt for the hood lining here, and that used up all of the fabric. There was just a little bit of scraps left. Um, so for this pattern, I actually, he just wanted a simple sweatshirt and he wanted something with a hood. So I'm like, surely I've got something in my stash that we could use. Like that's such a simple pattern. Um, and actually I have the J. Lee sweatshirt pattern. Um, I think it's just called the sweatshirt. And I don't even know if they sell it anymore, but I have, I have that pattern because I used it with all Jaylee patterns, it comes in like a bajillion sizes. And I'd used it to make ugly Christmas sweaters for the four of us one Christmas. And it comes with a hood um, option. I had not made that yet. Anyway, for some reason, I only downloaded the um, copy shop file when I downloaded that pattern. So I'm like, well, I just need to go, because I wanted to make it that day. I'm like, I just need to go re-download the um, A4 pattern from that, from their site. And their site was down because it was getting a makeover. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, come on. 
<laughs> so um, I still need to do that. Anyway, I did have though, uh, from Ellie and Mac, I had the zippered hoodie, I can't remember exactly what the name of the pattern is, in my stash that I had bought, I don't know if it was on a Wacky Wednesday, they do that sometimes, it's like a dollar pattern, um, or just on a sale of some sort, but I had that in my stash and decided, oh my gosh, that'll be perfect, I'll just omit the zipper and make it a sweatshirt. So that's what I did. So I took the seam allowance, so the front obviously gets cut too because you put in a zipper, so I just took the seam allowance off the front of the pattern and cut it on the fold and uh, made a sweatshirt for him. And I did the same with the um, the hem band. I just sewed it up. So it's one piece. The hem band is one piece. But I, obviously I just sewed it and put the um, seam at one of the side seams. Now this thing has the world's largest hood. And we were laughing so hard. Hopefully you'll see it in the, in the film footage. He's like, <laughs> he's been watching the show Arrow on Netflix. It's a CW series, I think, um, of Green Arrow. And um, it's a TV series. And that's like, he wears a hood that like comes up over his face and he's like mom look I'm Arrow and then we were like laughing that it almost goes like all the way over his face and we could put like eye holes in it <laughs> Have, it, it, it took on a life of its own. So I don't know why the hood is so huge on this, but that's the hood. Um, so we just got a real kick out of it. Anyway, he loves it. I use the same, the self fabric for the cuffs and for the hem band. Um, I think I sewed the extra small on this for him as well. It works perfectly. He thinks it's super snuggly and cozy and loves it. So that's very important. Um, but yes, the hood is a bit much. Um, but again, he just wants to be able to snuggle down into it. And then in that same fabric, this is what I plan to make. Um, I've made this pattern form a few times and it's the True Bias Hudson Pants. Um, this pattern you can buy the men's version, the women's version, and I think there's a kid's version too. I own both the men and the women's version. I've made this for him before, twice before. Um, and so I made this again and just lengthened because those current pants fit him fine. It's just that they're just fitting in the length. So I let, and I had shortened them for those two um, iterations. So I just let all that length back out, which I think was an inch and a half back out of the pattern. So now it's the, and I can't remember what size, the small, it's the smallest men's size. So now it's the regular length that it should be. Um, but the same, you know, waist and stuff. So it's got the pockets. I use the same fabric all the way around. I omit the drawstring. I just don't find it necessary. But I did do the line of stitching there um, through the waistband. Mostly, um, this pattern calls for two inch wide elastic and I keep one and a half inch wide elastic on um, in my stash. I don't carry, I don't hardly, because everything I use I feel like is either three quarters inch, an inch and a half, sometimes an inch. Although my inch and a half elastic I use is a knitted elastic so you can actually cut it to a different width if you'd like. Um, so I can make it one inch um, if I want to. But um, yeah, I just went ahead and, and kind of cut the waistband down a little bit so that I could use the one and a half inch wide elastic. Same fabric for the cuffs. He loves them. They're super comfy. Um, yeah, they've worked out just perfectly. So I have two very happy kiddos in their new pajamas. Um, I think my son's probably good with Hudson pants for now. Like I said, he has two other pairs that um, they still fit him fine. I mean, they're pajama pants. If they get a little short, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but his regular PJ pants were just done. Like they were shredding in places. <laughs> like they'd just been washed within an inch of their life and it was time for them to go. So I have a feeling I'll be making him a few more pairs of pajama pants probably um, as summer comes up because he likes to wear the pajama pants even in the summer because um, my kids get cold in the air conditioning. I don't know. They Their bedrooms are upstairs though, which normally gets hot. I don't know. They need more body fat on them. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, there you have it. That is my selfless sewing. So, you know, I don't always do just stuff for myself. I do spread the love a bit. Um, but that's the selfless sewing that I've been doing, the pajamas for my kids. Um, yeah, and sewed some new men's pa men's patterns that I hadn't sewn before. So that's kind of fun to share as well. Okay, guys, that's all I've got for today. Um, so you're seeing this on Friday. Actually, this weekend, my sewing group is doing a, um, we normally go for a sewing retreat. So this was my professional sewing organization that I'm a member of. And every year we do a Thursday through a Sunday at a cabin down in Southern Indiana. Um, and everyone takes a meal. And so you're only in charge of 
making and cleaning up one meal while you're there, which is just so lovely. And we all just turn the entire cabin into a big sewing workshop and we all just sew and fit on each other. And it's just such a great time. Obviously with COVID, um, we're unable to do that this year. Uh, so we are doing it virtually. So I'm gonna be holing up in my sewing room this weekend. And I actually uh, thought about doing a video of um, my plans for the weekend, but then I got to thinking like, I don't wanna have plans, sewing plans. I wanna just randomly pick a pattern and work on that this weekend. So I will show you guys what I get up to, but I didn't wanna do a plans video because I thought I just kinda wanna be very um, carefree and just kind of, uh, you know, whatever the mood takes me. It'll probably be a dress because I've really been in the mood to make some dresses um, and some floaty things. So we'll see though, we'll see I'll, what I wake up and feel like doing on Saturday morning. Um, I am gonna clean my sewing room tomorrow. Um, I'll obviously, I'm filming this on Wednesday, you're seeing it on Friday, um, so that everything is nice and neat and able to um, allow me to be creative in it. So that's my plan, but I will definitely show you guys what I get up to on my virtual sewing weekend. Um, see if my family can pretend that I'm not here for a couple days. <laughs> it's not gonna be like it normally is, that's okay. Um, hopefully we can do the, do our normal cabin uh, retreat again next year because it is something I look forward to, but oh well, it is what it is. Okay, so that's what we've got going forward. Um, Sunday is the last day of the um, B6385 so along, and you'll actually get to see my sister in her coat on um, Sunday. And then I still haven't decided if we're gonna go right into the um, uh, blouse sew along or if I'm gonna have a tutorial in there. I still haven't decided that. I'll be filming that and make that decision next week. <laughs> okay, that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I hope you guys can get some um, self-ish sewing in. Do some sewing for yourself. It's not really selfish. It's your craft, it's your creativity. So I hope you guys are able to get some sewing in this weekend like I'm gonna be getting in and I will see you guys again next time. Bye.